Tonight, justice calls. Bangladesh vows necessary steps to extradite former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina from India as a presence in India causes a diplomatic dispute. Debate ready. Presidential candidates Kamala Harris and Donald Trump will face off tonight and make final preparations for the crucial debate. Border checks. Germany tightens controls at all borders in immigration crackdown as lethal knife attacks have stoked concerns. A voice of an era. Legendary actor James Earl Jones, known for his booming voice in Star Wars, dies at 93. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. is other than in a world news tonight. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We have lots of updates on key stories across the globe and we start off in Bangladesh. Bangladesh's International Crimes Tribunal says that it is taking measures to secure the extradition of ousted leader Sheikh Hasina from neighbouring India. The chief prosecutor of the body said that the legal process to bring Hasina back to Bangladesh has started to face trial for the deadly violence waged by the authorities before she was unseated by mass protests in August. Following weeks of protest and a vicious crackdown by authorities, Hasina fled by a military helicopter on the 5th of August and landed at an airbase near New Delhi, seeking refuge. Her presence in India has affected relations between Dhaka and New Delhi, and a diplomatic dispute is possible as Bangladesh moves to bring her back to face trial. Mohammad Tajul Islam, the ICT's chief prosecutor, said Hasina, who was accused of ruling the country with an iron fist during her 15-year reign, is sought for her role in overseeing massacres during the uprising. He also added that Bangladesh has a criminal extradition treaty with India which was signed in 2013 while Sheikh Hasina's government was in power. Accused of widespread human rights abuses, including the mass detention of the extrajudicial killing of her political opponents, Hasina's government was brought down as weeks of student-led demonstrations escalated into mass protest. More than 600 people were killed in the weeks leading up to Hasina's oust, according to a preliminary United Nations report, suggesting the death toll was likely an underestimate. The former Prime Minister has not been seen in public since fleeing. Dhaka has revoked her diplomatic passport. Over in Vietnam, a busy bridge in northern Vietnam collapsed after being hit by Super Typhoon Yagi, which has killed more than 60 people since making landfall. Vietnam's most powerful storm in 30 years has wreaked havoc across the north of the country, leaving 1.5 million people without power. The force of Typhoon Yagi has been relentless, causing havoc wherever it struck. When motorists tried to cross this bridge in Vietnam, it simply collapsed. As the truck in front of them crashes into the swollen river, the people filming slowly reverse to safety. Survivors could not believe they escaped. Elsewhere, the storm has left a trail of destruction, smashing through villages and causing landslides. Authorities say, as well as the loss of life, thousands of homes have been damaged and this year's crops have disappeared under a brown sea of flood water. Yagi has been the region's most powerful typhoon this year, and it made landfall along the northeastern coast over Vietnam at the weekend. It had earlier passed through China, smashing everything in its path. Eyewitnesses described the sheer force of the tempest. The storm has now weakened to a tropical depression, but with homes still without power, scientists are warning that because of climate change, these destructive weather events will become more frequent. Updating you on the papal visits now, large crowds of Catholic worshippers in East Timor gathered in Tassitolu this morning ahead of an open-air celebration of Mass to which the Vatican says could draw more than half the population of the nation. Hundreds of thousands of Catholic faithful braved the heat today to attend Pope Francis' open-air Mass in East Timor, filling the Tassitolu Esplanade with a sea of yellow and white umbrellas mirroring the Vatican's flag. The same sacred ground had the borne witness to a pivotal moment in East Timor history when St. John Paul II celebrated Mass in 1989, bringing solace and inspiration to a nation fighting for its freedom from Indonesian rule. 
Organizers were preparing for about 750,000 people to attend the mass with Francis on Tuesday in Tesetolu, a wide, dusty coastal area where Indonesian forces were known to have buried slain Timorese independence fighters. Pope Francis arrived in the predominantly Catholic nation in the Southeast Asia for a three-day visit. The 87-year-old pontiff is on an ambitious 12-day Asia-Pacific tour, his longest overseas journey yet. His trip to East Timor is one of the two majority Catholic countries in Asia. It's only the second such visit by a pope. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. On the road to the White House now, Vice President Kamala Harris and former US President Donald Trump are preparing to face each other for the first time in a high-stakes televised debate as the US election is entering its closing stages with less than two months to go in the race for the White House. There is an only in America vibe around all this. Anticipation, energy, jeopardy. The circus has rolled into Philadelphia for the mother of all presidential debates. And it is certainly the case that with the polls so tight and the options so stark, there is a lot riding on the two candidates who will stand here tonight. How are you feeling? Kamala Harris has been prepping on the road between campaign rallies. Donald Trump cut this weekend campaigning short for an extensive prep session at his Florida resort and the rally routine hints at his pitch. Of course, we all remember how it worked out. It was the beginning of the end for President Biden, a performance which precipitated Harris's unchallenged rise. Good. Harris has had far less of this, but it is perhaps her poise. Uh, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. Well, wait, wait. I'm speaking. And prosecutorial background that could knock Trump off his stride. But it's not really here in democratic Philadelphia that all this matters. It is instead in the harder to reach, harder to win rural parts of tight states like this. Bringing you now the latest updates on the conflict in Gaza. At least 40 people have been killed and dozens more injured in Israeli strikes on a designated humanitarian zone in southern Gaza. The Israeli military said that its aircraft had attacked an operation center in Khan Yunus belonging to Hamas fighters and steps were taken to mitigate risk of harming civilians. Local residents say three strikes targeted tense housing displaced people in the humanitarian zone of the Al-Mawasi west of the city of Khan Yunis, causing seven meter deep craters. The operations director of the Hamas Civil Defense Authority said that 40 people were killed and more than 60 are injured, while many are still under the rubble. Eyewitnesses expressed that the explosions rocked the Al-Mawasi area shortly after midnight and flames could be seen rising into the sky. In a statement, an Israeli Defense Forces spokesperson said that the military had attacked significant Hamas terrorists who were operating within a command and control center embedded inside the humanitarian area in Khan Yunus. Meanwhile, Germany is set to expand border checks following a knife attack which left three people dead in the town of Solingen in August. The government has come under pressure to take a harder line on immigration since the stabbing, in which the suspect is a Syrian national who is facing deportation after a failed asylum bid. Germany's government says it is implementing temporary controls at all of the country's land borders in an attempt to tackle irregular migration and protect the public. The controls are set to begin on September 16th and last for six months. Germany has hardened its stance on migration in recent years, and the government is scrambling to retake the initiative after support for the far-right Alternative for Germany, or AFD, has surged over the issue. Recent deadly knife attacks where the suspects were asylum seekers have stoked concerns over immigration. The Islamic State group claimed responsibility for a knife attack that killed three people in August. The announcement comes after the AFD became the first far-right party since World War II to win a state election earlier this month. And two weeks ahead of an election in Brandenburg, where Chancellor Olaf Scholz and FaZe's center-left Social Democrats are fighting to retain control of the government. 
Germany shares this more than 2,300 mile land border with Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, Switzerland, Austria, the Czech Republic, and Poland. American actor James Earl Jones, an imposing stage and screen presence who overcame a childhood stutter to develop a stentorian voice that was recognized by the world over as intergalactic villain Darth Vader, died on Monday at the age of 93. Acclaimed actor James Earl Jones, the voice of Star Wars supervillain Darth Vader, died Monday at the age of 93. His agent did not cite a cause of death, but said Jones, a long-time diabetic, was surrounded by his family in his last moments. In interviews, Jones said he loved playing the part of Darth Vader and of being part of the Star Wars myth. His deep, booming voice took on a career of its own. Jones voiced Mufasa in The Lion King and won a Grammy for Best Spoken Word Album, Great American Documents, in 1977. But the voice didn't come naturally to Jones. As a child, he had to overcome a stutter, and he even stopped speaking because of it, staying mostly silent until high school. An English teacher got him to speak up and recite to the class a poem. After that, Jones said he learned to control a stutter and became interested in acting. Over the decades, Jones played many leading Shakespeare roles, including Hamlet, Macbeth, King Lear and Othello. He received Tonys for stage work in The Great White Hope in 1969 and Fences in 1987. And on television, he received Emmys in 1991 for Gabriel's Fire and Heat Wave. And finally tonight, the Princess of Wales has spoken of the relief at completing her course of chemotherapy in a highly personal video released by Kensington Palace. Catherine revealed in March that she was undergoing cancer treatment and has been out of sight for the public for much of this year. It's an inspiring message of hope and thanks from Princess Kate. As the summer comes to an end, I cannot tell you what a relief it is to have finally completed my chemotherapy treatment. The 42-year-old future Queen of England released the video message today. It shows the royal family in intimate scenes we've never seen before. This time, reminded William and me to reflect and be grateful for the simple yet important things in life. The response is overwhelming. Absolute icon of class, grace, dignity, goes this typical social media comment. Kate withdrew from royal duties six months ago when news of her cancer diagnosis broke. Kate has a poignant message to other patients and their families. To all those who are continuing their own cancer journey, I remain with you, side by side, hand in hand. Out of darkness can come light, so let that light shine bright. That is all we have for you tonight on World News. Tune in again for tomorrow for more key updates from across the globe. Stay tuned as Sanvi Mudda Nayaka will join you shortly with the nightly business report. Thank you for watching. Good night.